All right, and we are back for another episode, and I'm here with Fleischer. How's it going, guys? Good, man. How are you? Not too bad, man. You guys keeping busy? Yeah, there's uh, obviously a slowdown of live shows, um, which is kind of the bread and butter of most musicians, but um, still keeping busy, writing. a lot. Of, it's been a very creative time for us, and obviously hitting the studio too, so pretty excited about that. Awesome. And I've been asking pretty much every artist this, what has been your guys' biggest struggle during this quarantine thing? Um, I think, I think, yeah, it's, it's, for me, it's the live shows. It's, you know, as a musician, as an artist, the live shows are really where you kind of feel at home and feel like you are, you know, you're, you're moving in the direction that you're meant to. Um, as well as meeting all the, all the, you know, all the new fans and reconnecting with old ones. It's just such a, such a big thing for us. We absolutely love that. So going like, and not having that for the last little while has been kind of tricky, but we've been doing live streams and stuff like that to for sure you know, keep that vibe going as much as we can. So. Awesome. And what is one good thing you guys have taken from this quarantine? Um, looking at the silver lining, I think the live streams, it's kind of cool that our fans are actually getting to interact in the live show. So whether, um, not that they didn't before, but <laughs> there's a little bit more interaction just in the commenting and actually creating a connection. Sure. Uh, whereas, you know, they'd be across the room at their own tables, I guess, if it, if it wasn't for that or, or you know, so yeah, we had a uh, couple people join in from Nashville for our last, uh, for one of our last live streams. I can't remember if it was the last one or not, but, um, and, uh, yeah, it's kind of cool when they're commenting and you, you see some Albertan comments and that's kind of cool. That's right. Nice. Uh, I'd say also the, um, like Brad mentioned before, just like a lot of co-writes and stuff, it's been really great to be able to focus on, uh, like the creating side of, um, you know, the art. So for sure. And for those who don't know, you two are brothers, correct? Yeah. yeah. 15 awesome. months apart. 15 months apart? Yeah. So it's, we were pretty close growing up. So. <laughs> awesome. I'll, I'll just answer the question that everyone's thinking. I'm, I'm older. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, and, okay. So tell us how, how did this all come together? How, when did you guys to start, you know, decide to start playing music together? Well, um, we, oh man. Um, mom and dad, huge music fans, uh, classic rock mostly, but also 90s country. So we grew up, uh, also our dad's in construction and it's kind of a fam family business, I guess you could say. Okay. So we oftentimes would hop in the back of the gray GMC work truck and um, we'd ask dad to push in the tape, which was the cassette tape at the time. And it would be Bruce Springsteen or Bob Seeger and the Silver Bullet Band or meatloaf or like a mixtape of air supply and a bunch of others and um it was just really cool uh we just really vibed with the storytelling of that kind of blue collar heartland rock kind of thing and um and rock and roll at that time and then 90s country as well if the tape wasn't in the deck it would be tim mcgraw or alan jackson and and um yeah so we Actually, even at that time, there was a conversation I remember having. We were very young, very, very young. And I remember talking to Ryan about starting. I can't even tell you the street we were on. And we were under eight years old. Like, I was under eight. I, I don't know exactly, but it was before we moved from our first place. I'm rambling on a lot. But <laughs> I'm, I, was, I was younger than eight, which means Ryan would have been seven or, or younger. And we had a conversation about starting a band. And, and, uh, I even remember the name that we talked about frozen fire. <laughs> we were young yeah. and, um, yeah. And we were on Edmonton trail here in Airdrie and, um, yeah, I don't know. That's, that so, was the first talking about it. And then we got instruments when we grew up. And, yeah. So actually when, uh, when we were around 12, uh, well, Brad was 12 when he got his guitar and I was, I think I was around 11 or 12 when I got my bass. So mm -hmm. when we kind of more seriously expressed interest in um, starting a band and like, you know, going down that route, our parents really backed it. So 
it was really nice to, you know, not have the parents that are like, oh, quit doing that music stuff and like get a real job kind of thing, right? So very supportive. Yeah. Yeah. We've, we've always been a, you know, close with family and extended Actually, family as well. So we were, sure. and has it always been the country genre or have you guys tried other genres? No. Yeah. We were, um, kind of when we started when we played our first show, I was 14, Ryan was 13 and, um, we started playing, it was a half hour set at the Grace Baptist church in Airdrie across the street from our high school, our high school at the time. And, um, yeah, it was, uh, we covered, uh, like hotel California by the Eagles and summer 69 by Brian Adams. And so it was kind of a rock band off the start. Um, but it mostly covers at that time. And just as we got into writing, we just found that our writing style really hit in the country kind of vibe, especially with the storytelling that we grew up listening to. Heartland rock is kind of like country now in, right. in certain ways. For sure. Awesome. And uh, okay, so you guys just released recently your new single, Ride. Yes. Tell us, tell us everything we need to know about Ride. What's it about? Super proud of that one. Um, it's very authentic to who we are. Um, as we were writing it, um, Brad will tell you the whole story here as soon as I'm done talking. But um, but yeah, as we were writing, we just kind of gave it as much space as we as we could, kind of thing, just to to let it kind of just be its own thing. And um, yeah, like, like we weren't trying to make it a country like a country radio song or anything like that. It wasn't, it wasn't like we were attempting anything. Nothing was forced, I think is what and we saying. didn't, we didn't rush it at all. It wasn't like a, you know, a set like co-write time. Sometimes, you know, you sit down and you're like, okay, we're, we only have this much time. Let's write a song. Right. And um, this wasn't one of those situations. It was just like, let's see if we can craft like the, the song that fits us the absolute best. Right. So, yeah, it kind of started in the writing room. Uh, um, I told the story of a, a personal experience I had had where I finished uh, the day job and it was a long day at work. It was a little bit later than usual. And I, a left turn would have taken me home, but keeping, keeping going straight would have taken me out of town. And I ended up, uh, on a westbound road and, uh, got to the Rocky mountains and really just, I was just by myself on a week night <laughs> out in the mountains and just doing that drive. And it, it just felt so freeing and relaxing. And when I told that in the writing room, um, obviously I could relate. <laughs> yeah. So, so we just, yeah, we just started writing that. And that's actually the first couple lines of the song kept going straight when I should have turned left hit a corner store to go now I'm West. Yeah. Awesome. And, uh, did you guys write it yourself? Did you have co-writers? Yeah, we had one other guy write it with us in Toronto when we were doing the uh, Canada's Music Incubator. We were out there for two months taking part in that program. And so we wrote it with a pop pal of ours out there. Cool. And uh, you know, I know you guys talked about co-writing earlier. What's your favorite thing about co-writing? I think it's just really cool to, uh, to see how – like past experiences kind of blend between people and just seeing how influences blend as well. And just, you know, being able to just walk away with something that you feel is very, you know, close to your heart. And you wouldn't have had that same outcome if it was just one person in a room. It, right. There's something about co-writing and having multiple minds and the collaboration of similarities with those experiences and how, how they were handled and how they were felt at the time that makes a song kind of a little bit more, what's the word I'm looking for? Universal. Yeah, That's the word I'm looking for. for sure. A little more universal that way. Right. Okay. And then let's talk about songwriting now. Where do you guys find your inspiration from? Um, a lot, a lot just personal experiences mixed with our musical influences being, Oh man. Um, a million of them. Some of them I already mentioned where it was the Eagles and meatloaf and yep. Bon Jovi and Bruce Springsteen and them. Um, a huge, huge one for me personally, lyric lyricism wise would be Bob Seger. Yeah. 
I'd second that for sure. Another thing I would add is um, just, I think being from Alberta and like, um, like I mentioned before, just being very close to family and extended family. Um, I think there are certain things that we pull from experience experiences of people that we know too, and just being able to tell their stories as best we can too. Okay. Awesome. Okay. And what is the weirdest, most awkward way you guys have ever come up with a song? Oh, that's an interesting question. Weirdest way. Oh, I, I, it's not that strange, but like, um, I found it funny. We, um, we wrote with Megan Dawson and Chelsea. Um, and they said they wanted to write a party song, which is kind of outside of their, uh, what they typically wrote, I guess at right. the time. Um, so they said, let's write a party song. We booked it for 10 in the morning on a weekend. <laughs> so we ended up having brunch and then writing a party song right after about like, you know, getting wild yep. but i don't know 10 a.m was a little early to try getting that mindset for us yeah, for sure. we over skype too so because it was actually just in this last little stretch here of uh not really being able to meet up in person so it was just it was funny too because like sometimes you you have a a slight disconnect over skype as as opposed to being able to write in person right so there was that added on to it too yeah. for sure okay awesome all right, so this single of yours available on all platforms? Yes, it is. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so with the release of this single, what's next for you guys? Music videos? Yeah. We got, um, we got a lyric video in, in the works. Um, also, we're, uh, we're also hitting the studio. Well, actually, we're halfway done the song. Um, but we're just finishing up the backing vocals and some production, that kind of thing. And then we've got another song that we'll be releasing early summer is the plan. And uh, maybe even one or two more this year. So it's really just a uh, writing and studio. Okay, kind of perfect. Kind of for us. Yeah. Any more virtual shows? Like yeah, we'll be doing those. Uh, we like to keep that kind of like sporadic and whenever we feel as though we need to connect with the fans and we have something something to really um, uh, pivot on, I guess, and really, you know, share with them. Not not just music, but like the next chapter of the story and that kind of thing. And you don't want to do them too often or it's just, it's just another day. Right? Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, guys, last thing, um, tell everyone where they can find you on social media. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, uh, you can find us on social media. It's at Flacher music. That's for Facebook and Instagram. Obviously you can check out our website, uh, Flacher.ca and, um, you know, on Spotify if, or Spotify, Apple music, whatever you listen to, uh, you can just search Flacher, uh, F L A Y S H E R. And, uh, we'll come up on there and you can give us a follow if you'd like. And, um, yeah. Good cool. Luck. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for hopping on. Absolutely. Thanks for having us, man. Yeah, absolutely. And make sure everyone go get their single ride available on all platforms. And we'll talk soon, guys. You bet. All right. See you. See you.